Hey there. So this video is going to be about permaculture gardening or any gardening for spoonies. If you don't know what a spoonie is, that's okay. I'm going to explain it in just a minute. But basically, this is for people with challenges, mental health, physical health, chronic illness, whatever it may be. This is how to get through a long season of gardening without completely wearing yourself out. If you've been here on the channel for a while, you might know that I'm a permaculturist, that I'm a gardener, and that I have some challenges that limit what I'm able to do on a daily or weekly basis. So in this video, I'm going to offer you six practices that will help you manage your gardening season and your gardening year without becoming too overwhelmed. I'm not promising that you'll never get overwhelmed. I know how we are, you know how we are, it's going to happen, but let's minimize it. Remember to hang in till the end because I'm saving the best one for last. And also, I'm going to be asking you a question at the end of this video, which you can answer in the comments if you would like to get some group participation going on. I'm not expecting this video to be too terribly long, but if you would like to hit pause and get a drink, maybe um, get some note taking material, that would be awesome. Down below the video, either on a computer or on your phone, there's a save button. And if you want to not take notes right now and just watch it this time, you can save this video and come back and catch it again later. So that's available to you as well. What is spoon theory? Spoon theory is a theory that applies to people with chronic illnesses and the amount of energy that we use. It was originally described as having a certain amount of spoons of energy in a day to get things done. You might also think of it as an energy bar or a life meter in a video game. Let's say that I'm gonna put all the spoons that you have for a day in this cup, and before you do an activity, you have to take a drink, a spoonful of energy. So on this particular day, you wake up, and the first thing you notice is that your head is pounding. Everything that you're allergic to is blooming. You're pain disorder has caught on to this and has decided that if your body isn't in pain someplace, it must need to turn all the pain signals on. So not only is your head pounding and your eyes feel like they're swollen, but your whole body hurts. Your mental health has decided to bombard you with thoughts of what a horrible person you are or whatever it is that your brain does to you. So on this particular very terrible morning, you've got about three spoons available to you. One, two, Three. On mornings like this, it's really hard to get out of bed. So before you even get out of bed, that's a spoon. If you have a uh, caffeine addiction, maybe you need to make your coffee. Well, guess what? Making your coffee uses a spoon. You finish drinking your coffee and you go to brush your teeth. Uh-oh. You made it 30 minutes into your morning and your spoons are gone. This happens to some of us sometimes. Most days are better, but not always. Sometimes we wake up with zero spoons. Sometimes we wake up with a whole drawer. But we have to work with what we have because if we don't stop, our bodies and our minds will stop us. That's spoon theory in a nutshell, or in a glass, if you will. Let's carry on. I will have you know that I just set myself back up on my sitting stump. I had my hibiscus tea in front of me and promptly kicked it. So I'm going to pour myself another glass real quick. So in my case, my limitations are one of the reasons that I chose permaculture. Permaculture has us front load our efforts so that when we're putting in a system, a food forest or a backyard garden or a backyard food forest or whatever it is that we're doing, we put in most of the work in the early years and we're setting our system up to be self-sustainable and regenerative. We are planting flowers that will self-sow and we're planting perennial food plants and we're making it so that while we have the youth, which I don't so much anymore, <laughs> but when we have the youth, we use all of those youthful spoons, so to speak, to do work that will save us spoons later. So we can take this same 
broad permaculture concept and work it down to the details of our seasonal or weekly or daily tasks. Which leads us to number one in the practices that I'm going to suggest for you. Number one is going to be spend spoons on planning. I know to sit down and write down everything that you need to do, take spoons, it takes energy, it takes effort. It feels like a lot at times, but when you do it, the things that you need to do flow easier because you've already put the time into planning it. It's front loading your work by planning. It's gonna reduce your daily, your weekly, and your seasonal stress. And you can do this in comfortable chunks. You don't need to dedicate a day to planning out your entire garden season. You can plan out what tasks you need to accomplish today and let that be enough. You can plan out which tasks you would like to get done this week and then prioritize those, which brings us to number two, prioritize. Let's have a hypothetical 100 degree summer day. Your number one priority on that day might be getting your plants watered if they were already dry. It doesn't matter what else needs to be done on that day if those things are less important than keeping your plants alive by watering them. Let's say my list says water the gardens, tie up tomatoes, and pick okra. Well, water tomatoes on a 100 degree day, that's going to be my first priority. I'm going to skip over tying the tomatoes on that day because it can wait. And I'm going to go ahead and harvest the okra as my next thing because okra that doesn't get picked on the day it's ready becomes okra that you can't eat instantly. So prioritize. Set which tasks are more important at the top and set lower priority tasks at the bottom. You can either number. If you look up the original bullet journaling, they had a really clear and succinct system of prioritizing. I love the creative, fun bullet journaling, but I don't always have the energy for it. The simplistic system of bullet journaling, I can put a dot, put something next to it, and mark it off when I'm finished, or mark it through because I didn't get to it, or I can put an exclamation point before something that's really important, or I can put a question mark before something that doesn't really need to get done. Also, Post-it makes Post-it notes that are called super sticky. So if you have a spot on your wall where you can put your tasks, and then if you use those super sticky ones, you can unstick them and restick them several times so you can change your priorities and shift things for a while, I had a calendar on my door made out of post-it notes where I would just move things around where I could do them. So we already touched on this, but number three is gonna be front load your work. Now in January, we've been talking about permaculture principle number one, observe and interact. For me, one of my mental health issues when I'm really down is executive dysfunction. In me, that shows up as an inability to initiate tasks, to put tasks in order and to change my plans on the fly. At one point this resulted in me sitting on a kitchen floor crying because I couldn't figure out if I should take the vegetables that I wanted to heat up for my warm salad out of the fridge first or the lettuce that the vegetables were going to go on. I know that's ridiculous. I knew it was ridiculous when it was happening but I still couldn't get through it. I observed that was a problem, felt silly about it, but I called my partner who helps me through things like this they told me to take the veggies out so I could get them warming. And from there, I interacted by making a plan and a habit that anytime I had that meal, I would take the veggies out first and then the lettuce and just build a little routine around it. I front loaded my work by making a plan for a habit to have a way that I would do this thing that tripped me up. Currently, I am late on starting my seeds. I know, when I did my seed starting planning video, I told you, I plan for the earliest date possible because I know I will fall behind. I'm already behind. One thing that kept tripping me up was that I didn't have any cocoa core already broken down. I had my solid block of cocoa core that I had to soak and break down. Every time I'm like, ooh, I could go start seeds right now, I have the energy, I remember that I have to break down that cocoa core and it stops me dead. So yesterday, I was out in the garage getting chicken feed and I saw the cocoa core block and I said, aha, I'm gonna do that right now. And it cost me a couple of spoons because it takes a little time to break down a big block of cocoa core. I put it on the bench by the back door and every now and then I got myself some warm water and I poured it on that block of cocoa core and I would leave it there. Later on, I'd come back, heat up another pot of water, pour it on there. Now, when I get that inkling like, ooh, I could go start my seeds right now, it's ready. I front loaded my work. So anything like that, um, mix your soil, put your mulch where you can get to it, group all your seedling or all your seeds 
do those things when you have a little burst of energy for a small piece of work. That way, when you get to the bigger piece of work, you don't have to do all those little steps first. You've front loaded your work. In February, we're gonna be talking about permaculture principle two, which is catch and store energy. And this kind of works for that. So I'm gonna catch the energy of those spoons like I did with the cocoa core yesterday. I caught my energy when I had spoons for it. I did the work. That energy is now stored for me later. So I'm gonna take a minute to ask you, if you are finding this helpful, if you found some of my other videos helpful in the past, if you would please hit like and subscribe, and that will let YouTube know that you wanna see more of my material. And I would really appreciate that because it helps me out. Thanks. All right, so number four, this one is hard for me. And I just told you about this with my executive dysfunction problems. Be willing to adjust. Now, as I told you, adjusting on the fly is hard for me sometimes. Not always. If I was teaching a class of kids and the event that we needed to go to was full, I can go to another event and coach balance beam instead of bars. No problem. I can make that shift. Some shifts my brain doesn't want to make. Like I told my gymnast all the time, practice makes performance. When I have to shift on the fly, I practice being able to do that. But, you know, we do the best we can with what we have. I'm also going to bring some yoga philosophy into this. Work with detachment from the outcome of your work. Ugh. That one is so hard, but we have to be willing to let some things go and to be able to change our plans. I was being very careful about my tender plants and the frost that we had. And we had several frosts that would like, oh, we might have a frost and then it was only 33. Or you might have a frost and it just barely kissed 32. And I did great and I stayed on top of it all. And then one night we might hit 22 and only be in the 20s for like an hour. Well, what actually happened is that we ended up in the 20s for a long time and we ended up under, tw under 20 for a while. It got down to 18. My regular frost preparations did not work. My plants had not had time to acclimate because we didn't have time in the upper 20s and the middle 20s before that happened. And I lost everything. Y'all started calendula with me. Y'all started a bunch of calendula with me and I think y'all might have gone around with me and planted some of them. They're all dead. They're gone. Swaha. Nothing I can do about it. Swaha. It means letting go of something that's already gone. It does not mean effort. It doesn't mean I'm tired of these tomatoes, I'm gonna give up on them. It means these tomatoes are already dead. The 18 degrees got them. There's nothing I can do about it. Swaha. Another aspect of be willing to adjust is to remind yourself that garden failures are lessons. You fail so that you can learn from them. The lesson that I learned from the surprise 18 degrees was that I need to embrace the concept of swaha more in my gardening. <laughs> I need to not be so shaken when unexpected things happen, but, you know, <laughs> we do what we can. Number five is going to be group your plants. Use your permaculture zones. At the end of this video, I'll put up a link to the permaculture zones video in case you don't know what that means or in case you need a little touch up on that concept. To boil permaculture zones way down, basically you put the things that you use more often that need you more often and that you spend a lot of time with closer to where you exit the house or enter your garden or someplace that you pass frequently. Grouping things by use. In the springtime, I like to come outside and pick a lot of my salad. So I'll plant my lettuce by my nasturtiums, by my basil, near my tomatoes, by my green onions. When I come out to pick a salad, I pick my lettuce leaves that I want to use. I pick my nasturtium. Blah, blah, nasturtium leaves, I pick my nasturtium flowers, I pick some basil leaves, I grab some strawberries, I get some green onions, and then I can go inside and chop all that up. It all came from one little area. I don't have to travel through the whole yard picking a salad. Group your plants by their watering needs. If you have a lot of things that need a lot of water and you put them all in one area and then there's another little plant off by itself with plants that don't need a lot of water, that plant is going to die. <laughs> I'm going to forget about it. I'm going to blow it off. I'm going to not have the energy to take the extra 20, 30 steps and spend an extra however long. So I'm going to group my plants by their water needs. I'm going to do the same thing with their frost hardiness. So I already talked about the tomatoes and those had basil growing with them because they have the same frost tenderness. When it was time to abandon that garden for the winter, 
yes, it was 30 degrees when I woke up this morning and I am in a tank top. When it was time to let that garden go, I got to let the whole garden go and now I don't have to walk down there anymore until I replant it. <laughs> and then interplant. This goes with grouping your plants and zoning, but it also goes with front loading your work. And we'll go back to the tomatoes for an example. One big pest for tomatoes is hornworms. So I'm gonna plant a lot of umbral flowers like dill, fennel, um, yarrow, carrot tops for flowers, because those attract parasitic wasps, which attack the caterpillars that eat my tomatoes. So I'm grouping plants that help each other. I can also put garlic and basil down there because those create scent confusion, which also helps push pests away, and because those grow flowers, which attract beneficial insects. So use your permaculture zones to make your workload lighter. And number six, which I told you was the most important, and it is, schedule rest. Schedule it. Put it in your planner. Mark days off. That is a hard day off. The only way that you ignore that hard day off is if there's an emergency. If you schedule a hard day off and you have an emergency and you have to work through that day, schedule yourself another hard day off. You will appreciate it later. Promise you. Schedule soft days off or half days off. Like I demonstrated with Spoon Theory. If I work really, really hard on a Monday and I know I've pushed myself beyond my spoons and I know there's some stuff I have to get done on Tuesday, I will do that in the early part of Tuesday and then I'll take a half day and I won't do any work in the afternoon. I am especially bad at ignoring my off days. My brain is especially bad at punishing me for that. So I'm trying to get better at it. <laughs> but schedule them, put them in your calendar. I actually, every other month, the last week of the month, I do not allow myself to shoot videos or edit. That means I have to front load my work. But I have that time off because <laughs> I'm an introvert and I'm asocial and this is actually really scary for me. And I'm one of those freaks who can laugh through being scared or being in pain, so yay. But plan the time, plan the downtime. If you don't, your body, your mind, your chronic illnesses will take the downtime for you. Schedule it so your body and your brain don't do it to you. Plan garden walks. You put all this energy into making productive, beautiful, fragrant spaces. Spend leisure time in them. Don't let all of your garden time be work. Have places that you can sit. On a nice day, take your coffee outside and feel and smell your plants while you have your coffee or your tea or your water or your lemon water or whatever it is that you do. Take relaxing time. Have places in your garden that you can sit and listen. You can do a listening meditation, the super, super, super quick and dirty of it. And if you want more instructions on how to do this, leave a comment below and maybe I'll do a video about it. The very basic version is you sit down and you listen. I hear a bird and I hear cars on the highway. I hear a dog barking. Now, if I'm doing listening meditation, I'm gonna try to take away identifying the sounds by name. I'm not gonna say I hear a car. I'm gonna say I hear a sound. I'm not gonna say I hear a bird. I hear a sound. And I'm gonna focus on what the sound sound like and not worry so much about naming it. And if you do that in your garden, it helps you with the observe and interact. It helps you relax. And it helps you just be there without working. And that can be really, really important when we're trying to do all of this massive work with limitations. Take time for yourself, take care of yourself, set yourself up for relaxing situations. So today's question is, which of these practices are you gonna put into play today? I gave you six. You don't have to do them in order. You can do them however you like. You can be completely willy-nilly about it, it doesn't matter. But please put in the comments which one you're gonna start working on. And maybe even if you'd like to share why that one's most important to you or why you chose it or why it speaks to you or how you're gonna implement it. Let's get some community and some talking going on, all right? And as promised, here is that Permaculture Zones video. And I'm gonna throw the Starting Your Garden playlist right here so that you can catch on the, all of that too. Alrighty? Later, y'all.